Broadway. Buenas tardes. Su nombre, por favor. Y le llamo Ari Sulta. ¿Cuál es su nacionalidad? Soy English, English, English de Darlington. ¿Cuál es su ocupación? Soy uh, journalist, uh, period, periodista. Esta es la primera vez que vienes a España, ¿verdad? What? A1M control, quick as you can, love. Ah, oh, yeah, wanker! <laughs> do you reckon he's calling all cars? I don't think he wants our friend to do the ton. Nah, he'd be gutted. Yeah, A1M southbound. Five miles north of the Darlington exit. You've got some poor bastard being towed at 90 plus. Stop! 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 Grey Maroon Saab, A115 AAB. And a brown marina. Come on! He's trying to block the road! The sports ball! Take him on the inside! <laughs> Look, I'm making this worse. I'm letting them go. He's in a labor. I'm with him now. Don't, don't! Shit! Shit! What do I do now? What do I do now? It's blue going on green! Name. Frederick Burney. How are you doing? Come on, we're getting there. Freddy? Frederick? Oh, he's salted, right? Yeah. Your office got done, didn't it? I've seen you hanging about with old Nick. Yeah, that's right. So, we'll be reading about this in tomorrow's paper, then. What you on about? Well, if you're thinking of giving us a mention, that's Stebbins and I'm Royo. That's R-O-Y-O. -O. 
What paper do you read? Uh, Star. See what I can do. Freddy, Frederick. Oi, watch for the chug up when he comes round. <laughs> Is it okay? Yeah. Do you reckon the papers will want this? Pinching a towed down motorway at 100 miles an hour. Would you read it? Oh, yeah. Pays for a job. Other people's nightmares, we love them. Nick him. You on for tonight? I want a word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <whistles> yeah, right. Hurry. Take a look out the window. Yeah? Yeah. We got them. We saw all wrapped up with sellotape under two hours. You can come again. You got their names? Stephen Drew and Tommy Kiffner, both 23. Oh, and Stebbings and Roy O. That's R-O-Y-O. They're gonna dump on those two. They won't want this catching on. So how did it all start? You talked to Fred? Yeah, down at the hospital. The little old man's at the side of the road in his car. It's broken down. The two lads turn up. They're very helpful, tinker about under the bonnet. They can't get it started. So they offered to tow him to a garage. That's not a great story, though, is it? You know, no vendettas, no old grudges trying to be settled. Don't need it. It's good enough on its own. Could happen to anyone. How is he? Oh, Fred. A bit poorly. It'd be quite nice if he snuffed it. Perfect. <laughs> All helps, doesn't it? The worse he is, the worse it is for them. One statement. Thanks, Harry. We owe you one. Yeah, thanks. See you around. Well, since you owe me one, how about, um... What? You two just work on the motorway, don't you? A1, yeah. How do you feel about a photographer and a reporter coming out with you on the shift in the car? What sort of colour supplement? Day in the life of stuff? Bit of PR, isn't it? When? Whenever. Well, we all know how you feel. Well, if you fancy it, I mean, uh, get clearance, give us a ring. I'm at the damn pool. R-O-Y-O. -O. Well, I hope you're not thinking about me. What are you doing here? Come to see you. Who's taking me? I want to show you something. Hello? Are you going to talk to me? I don't know what to say, do I? Well, try. I've just been on a story. In the middle of it. It's all going on. And I lost it. Me too? No, 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 the story's all right. The story's in place. It's me. Look, when I'm working on something, I mean, it, as it's going on, it, the, the copy's being written up here as it happens. This time... Tch. Don't do that! What? That pisses me off. I didn't do anything! Yes, you did. Harry! You're checking on I me. I was not! I have not had a drink, all right? If I want another drink, I'll have one. But I haven't. You want me to start checking the bed sheet, see who you've been having it off with in the afternoons? <laughs> so it upsets you, does it, eh? This whatever it is you've lost. Come on, what do you want to show me? In the van. God did that. <laughs> Good, better. And by the way, I've only slept with one other man since I met you, yeah. and I was married to him. I know. I was unfaithful to him, not you. And I have not had a drink. I'm sorry. That's right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Good kisser. Come on. Okay. <laughs> well, whatever happened to jewellery and coronation mugs? It's circa 1780. I've got to buy you. Oh, it needs a bit of work. What do you think? Well, it's a bear, isn't it? Oi! Uh, sorry. Here's a 
associate is speaking. I'll just get him for you. It's for you, someone called Royal. And you can go to the office tomorrow. They want you to have a look at the new floor. Hello, Harry here. Yes, yeah, that's all right. Yes, they'll be there. Snappy. Yeah, OK, thanks a lot. That's terrific. Yeah, bye. Frederick Burney. He's an old bloke. He's down the Memorial Hospital. I don't know what wing. Full bed shot. Plenty of sympathy. No smiles. Right? Yeah. Do you want a coffee? Yeah. And then come straight back here. I think we're on a clean sweep. I want to try and syndicate it. Alice! Where's Jonathan? I don't know. I think he's following something up. Tomorrow afternoon, you and Jonathan, you're going on the motorway with the police. Stebbins, Royo. Highway patrol. I said you'd meet him at two o'clock at the station. Yeah. Who's it for? Depends what you come up with. Well, look, just so you know, Alice and me were on our lunch break. Snappy, I didn't say anything. Look, I'm just saying it was in her own time. It was a late lunch. Fine. I thought Alice was a vegetarian. Look, Harry, there's no... All you had to do was to lock the door. Yeah, we thought we had. We just don't give her a hard time, eh? I wasn't. I'm not. I won't. I promise. Anyway, she's got a boyfriend. What's his face? Craig? Yeah, well, you know, it's a bit... Um... Hospital. Fred Burney, tell Jonathan about tomorrow when you see him. Day with the traffic police. Yeah, all right, man. I'm not going with them. You set it up, though. I think you're losing your touch. That is a delicate subject. I should think it is. Have you any idea how boring yeah, it is? Yeah, okay. Don't to... have a go at me today, please. Now, come on. You wanted to have a word. Yeah, just a couple of things. Has anybody contacted you about this bloke? Don't ask me to pronounce it. What is it, a chink? No, oh, Vietnamese. There's a deportation order on him and he's done a runner. They reckon one of these refugee groups is trying to make an issue out of it. I haven't heard. Wouldn't interest me. Bad copy. OK. How about these bright boys on the hospice scam? Harry? <clears throat> the old bloke slumped over his wheel, going through the colours of the rainbow. The police have arrived, so they're dealing with it. And I'm just standing there. I'm doing nothing. I'm not phoning in my report, I'm just... Yeah, well, you were worried about him. Embrace it, Harry. Send him some flowers and be normal. Normal's no good to me. I go after stories, that's what I do. Go after what? It's giving you on a plate, man. You don't understand, do you? I had his wallet in my hand. Basic procedure. You can learn a lot if you go through it. Not me. I didn't look. I'll give it back. Look, wait a minute. The papers have all bought the story, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, so what's the problem? No, it's not a problem this time, but there's no race on, no competition. What happens when the pressure's on, eh? I tell you, it's simple. I forgot. I forgot I'm a journalist. Not possible. Oh, I'm sorry, love. I just... I just feel I've, I've lost me edge. You lose more than that if you don't hurry up. It's quarter to twelve. And I'm still waiting. You haven't thought of one, have you? Give us your hand. And I don't want a bit of poetry. Give us your hand. I love you so much, it hurts. Ow! Ow! Well, it didn't hurt much, did it? Right! <laughs> Ow! Jackie! How are you? All right. Yeah? Not too noisy up there, is it? All the work going on? No, it's fine. Listen, we're going to have a reopening party on the 18th. Oh, do you want me to help? Don't be soppy, you're invited. Come on, let's go and see our nice new floor, eh? Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Not by the sheep. Uh, just take her upstairs, will you, love? I'm going to do a bit of shouting. Is there something wrong? You tell me. Ah, uh, wait, I know it's not exactly what you requested, but... Uh... It's close, Mr. Salter. It's close and uh, it's beautiful. 
I don't want it. It's not what I asked for. Would it take it up? What am I going to do with it? I don't know. But don't leave it there. No, Jonathan. What do you mean? Didn't turn up and we can't track him. Trouble is, they seem to think this is a big deal, us going out with him. They had to get permission from the deputy chief constable or something. Anyway, one of them already got the ump. Which one? Royal. What about? Something about his name not being in paper. Look, I didn't want to cause more upset, so I said... Are you coming, Harry? Something like that. Sorry. Yeah, it was OK. Just talk. Yeah. Mr Finnerty, take it away. It's not what I ordered. I don't want to go up and down the motorway all day. Oh, that's nice. Look, I hardly see you anymore. You keep sending me out with Jonathan. Look, have I changed that much since you got here? What are you talking about? Come on, Harry, it'll be a laugh. They've got a rotor of priority offences. Today's is speeding. Whoosh. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it'll be good. It's down to appetite, isn't it? That's what gives you the edge. You've got to want it. Yeah, come on, come on. Whoosh. Afternoon, boys. Sorry about this. We're not meant to be doing it. They know you're on board. They've got to relieve us. Jim, see how they're doing. I've called them twice. Escort duty. Yes, sir. How far's it going? Uh, let's see. Very gone to eat. <laughs> Have you got any tapes? Sorry about the newspapers, Jim. Your name was in the report I sent in. Only they edit them. You know, rewrite them. I just send them in. Yeah, the thing is, I wouldn't mind, but he's in every paper. I resuscitated them, didn't I? about the telegraph? There's three Stebbins in there. Yeah, we'll put it right this time, eh? Oh, yeah, they're really gonna want this. I'm gonna have that Jonathan, where is he? Aye, right, and what about the mirror? Excuse me. It's OK. Right, we'll Mr. Pisleski. Pilecki. Jonathan, how do you do? This is Mr. Nguyen Barman, and this is Claire Gabriel. Claire works for Mr. Barman's solicitor. What? What is this? Sanctuary. What? What's he saying? Sanctuary. He's asking for sanctuary. What? Here? So, what's the funniest thing that's ever happened to you on the motorway? 316, Charlie November, resume state 3, Mike 50, we're leaving you over. Ah, right. Yes, well, I'm sorry, but the answer is no. You can't say that. <laughs> I just have. No, under canon law, Mr. Barman's entitled to 40 days and 40 nights sanctuary. And we're not even asking for that long. Is he a Christian? No. Cal die, actually. Well, if that's a problem, you can baptise him. <laughs> you know very little about it. Look, he needs help. They're trying to deport him back to Vietnam. The man's terrified. All you have to do is let him stay here. That's all you're being asked. Other people are going to do the hard work. You seem to think it's a very simple matter. Yes, I do. Or perhaps it's just a good story for the newspapers, eh? In which case, you're making it better and better. Why do they want to deport him? Mr. Barman came here in 89. Previous to that, he was settled in Sweden from Hong Kong. In February this year, he was attacked in the street, hospitalized. The police were called. When they fed his name into a computer, he didn't exist. So he's an illegal immigrant? No. I am Swedish. This is what we're trying to sort out. They want to send me back to Vietnam. 
I need a new solicitor. I need time. Please. Remember that craze for CB? Well, I had one, like, what, what, what we used to listen in for. I used to go like, what's your handle? Yeah, what was your handle? Mine was plot. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Bit of a washout. Do you think you'll ever come back, though? Do you want to call it a day for now? What? Do it till other time? What? what? <laughs> Put your jackets on. What is it? Less than a mile. Here we go. Nice and fresh, this one. What do you mean? Short tailback, we're here quick. That's car phones for you. Some bugger doesn't have to run half the motorway to call us. Bloody hell. Yeah, we're approaching now. Both carriageways blocked. Looks like someone's crossed the central reservation. Confirm, one fire. Stay where you are! What are you doing? Shut up a minute! Sorry. Setting caution signs, southbound. The first thing is to stop anyone else from... Steps! Steps! Go! Doing go! That. Go! Strike two. Steps up. They're doing the signs, we're clear. Like a bloody yo-yo. You're unbelievable. Who deals with that then? Next lot. First come, first served. You two stay here, right? I took the far side, yeah? Aye, right, check that lorry. All these people on their way somewhere, and in what? Ten seconds, you get this. Excuse Got me. enough light? Excuse me, please. Can you help? I can't get to help. Show me what? What's the rest of Alice's home number? 437, what? Come on! Uh, 834. There's his legs, look. Alice, can you get down to the office? Yeah, and send Jonathan to the hospital. Well, try him! Otherwise, find out who's covering this with the Gazette. It's probably Terry. Offer a handout. I want first refusal on all info. Yeah, whatever hands, I want someone down there. How many? Three down and four, five cars. The lorry's no problem. I told you to stay put. Well, what's the count? Possibly four dead. Nine injured. At the moment. Not enough for you. A few short of a full scoop, isn't it? Look, if there's anything I can do, tell me and I'll do it. Otherwise, I'm going to cover Boyle, this. We need some help here. Bollocks. I'll get him. Hurry. I'll get him. It just goes off. It, it, it goes off into the bridge and, and comes back. It, it comes in front of me, off the bridge and then back. It, 
You can't miss something that's suddenly in front of you. Yeah, you'll be all right. You're going to be all right. I, I didn't hit... It hit me. I, I didn't hit it. It hit me. Yes, you're going to be OK. Come here! You want recovery, Trucks? Well, you are. I'm asking you one more time. The call came on the radio. Not here, it didn't. Well, we're here now, OK? Trying to make a living, just like you. And you are booked for coming north down a southbound. <laughs> His legs are trapped! <laughs> Leave him! He's gone! <laughs> Move it! <laughs> Get him out of here! Tonight you can forget it. The heat's lifting the tarmac up. Put at it like a caramel. It's happening already. Step A. Come on, mate, come on. Nobody's gonna want pictures of this. Step A. No! Later, Harry. Seats in the back. We're looking for maybe one more child. Try under the front seat. Actually under it. I've seen full-grown adults end up there. I'm rare. I need to run. I saw the child seat. I should have left. Stabs you wouldn't have made a difference. No. Every time I... Yeah. Anything else I, I can handle? No God in heaven. As Kaudai, we have Buddhist, Taoist, Confucianist, Christian elements and... And what have you taken from Christianity? We have a Pope in Tainai, a cathedral. Do you have bells in your church? We do, yes. In Tainai, I ring the bells. And if you are still here on Sunday, you may do the same for us. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Barman, why would you not want to go back there? No one's in. I've left messages everywhere. I gave your office number. Is that OK? Yeah, I'll go back there and wait. The refugee agencies are closed at the moment. It's night. <laughs> so I'm going to go somewhere where they can contact me. Sleep well. I'll stay with you, if that's all right. Now, you're both welcome to sleep in my house. I think Mr. Barman's safer here. Seven dead, 15 injured. A few of those could turn into fatalities. Does that include the BMW that went into the tailback? Yeah. OK, mate, thanks. What'd you get? Still trying to piece it together. The silver VW hit the side of the bridge. What do you mean? I know it's way over there. No, no, why did it go into the bridge? I broke three cars back, said it looked like a front rear side puncture, just veered off. What, a blowout? Yeah. They clipped the bridge, came back into the road, got hit by a Sierra, and then went into the path of the oncoming traffic. What, you got one child up here and the other one down here? That's, that's the part of the VW? Yeah. Safety belts only stop you from going forward. If you get hit from the side, you just get squirted out. Full child seats had crossover belts, don't they? It makes no odds if you impact at 70. Check with the accident investigator. I knew it. I just knew it. I could feel it in the air. What's that? I won't be getting a mention. Jim. R-O-Y-O. -O. I don't think so, somehow. A hundred pounds says your name will be in print. I'll be a bastard to take it, Harry, but they've called through to say it's open house. But I'm here. The press are invited. The press are coming, courtesy of our deputy chief constable. Oh, come on. <sighs> Look. He's declared it. I'm sorry, Harry. A prime example of reckless driving in adverse weather conditions. Maximum publicity required. 
That was shit. Look, I'm just a messenger. I I'm just reading it. Look, full cooperation to be offered, no more debris to be cleared until the photo call is over. Where's Snappy? Snappy? Yeah. He went with that woman in the ambulance. He did what? The wife of the one that got charcoal. Didn't he tell you? Right, full cooperation. I want to get off this motorway. If I've got competition coming, I want to get back to my office. I could run in there. Yes? £100 still stands? Yeah, OK. Right, come on, let's go. Harry, what happened to that bloke? What bloke? The one wandering around in the road, waving his arms about. He ran off. Ran off where? I don't know, in a field somewhere. Oh, oi, come back. Look, I'm... No, Stebsy, wait. Now, what did he look like and which way did he go? The Davenport. Yeah. Listen, when the press get there, find out what newspapers they're from and give us a ring, yeah? Answer the phone, that is. Alice, pick up the phone. Bloody ridiculous. I've never seen anything like it. No. Make it to the hospital. Can you drop me there? I've got to get Snappy on the job. Did you see that? Yeah. Stepsy, hospital. Some of the names until the next of kin have been notified, otherwise I've got the lot. Well, what are you doing here? Well, I couldn't get a hold of Jonathan or anyone else. Who's looking after the office? You said someone had to be here. I tried to call you, but... Oh, I... for Christ's sake. Where's Snappy? He's in one of the rooms down there. Call us a cab. I know the ring was on his finger. I was holding his hand. <laughs> you saw it. <laughs> We're going to try and find it for you. Can I have a word? <laughs> Hold on, love. Be back in a minute. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you for letting us know you were leaving us. Well, yeah, well, I Forget things... it. Listen, I want your film process sharpish. I've opened up the crash site to all comers. I didn't take any. What are you saying? I didn't shoot any film. You're my photographer and you haven't taken any pictures. Some things aren't important, Harry. Oh, tell me about them. That woman there has lost her husband. Was she, your mother or something? Get that Snappy, close, Harry. Snappy, bring her to the hotel, get a room for her. Call her family, marry her, do what you like. Get me those photos. He wanted to be buried. I suppose he still can, can't he? I'd have liked his wedding ring back, though. He never took it off. Well, he couldn't. His fingers got too fat. Thanks, Debsy. Yeah, tell Jim I owe him a hundred quid. I've got to go off for a bit, but I'll not be long. All right. Snappy, don't bother with the photographs. Yeah, fine, very good. Where shall we meet? I don't think outside the church is a very Excuse good idea. Me. Do you remember me? Harry Salter, you work for me. Harry? Where have you been? That was a phone call about a story. We've had jobs for you. Where have you been? We've just missed out on a big one. Thank you very much. We couldn't do it without you. Alex, get me a bottle of Jim Beam. Come on, where have you been for two days? I've been following up. Get me a bottle of Jim Beam. Well, that's not Clements. A call came into the just office the yesterday morning. Come on, fill me. There's a Vietnamese refugee, Nguyen Ba Man, and he's, and he's had a got deportation a deportation order. slapped on him. Oh, my sweet, blessed virgin wife. He's just ordered a bottle of Jim Beam on its own. I'll come with you. And Mr. Man staying there until we can find him an experienced solicitor. Where's the story? Well, that phone call was to a refugee agent. No, 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 no. Where's the story? I've just told you. What, a Vietnamese man being deported is a story. Have you heard of Hong Kong? Give me that. Do you want me to drink this? No. 
You're all working for yourselves, aren't you, eh? Doing your own thing. Well, let me tell you, I can go freelance as well. Give me DCI Nichols. I mean, why reopen the office, eh? Why not call it a day? You can go and work for Christian Aid. Nick, it's Harry. How was the move? Thought you moved house today. Well, that was you, was it? Yeah, I laughed a lot. Listen, you know this Vietnamese guy who jumped bail? Well, he's at the St Saviour's Church. All right, leave it. That was a shit thing to do. Do you know what's waiting for him if he gets deported? Yes. And who cares? Do you care? Before that call came in the office, what were you doing for these people, eh? Anything? Come on. Yes, Jonathan, I admit I don't care. We've got 59,000 Mr. Mans in Hong Kong. We're forcibly repatriating them by the plane load. I've seen it on News at 10. And I give not a toss. I'm dealing with an individual. Let me tell you, Sonny, your inscrutable Chinese are not so cuddly. That phone call was unforgivable. Yes, I'm a shit. All right. He thinks so, so does she. But you could have done nothing for that bloke because you had no story. If you got on the phone now and called that vicar and persuaded him to get his flock to surround the church and then call the TV stations and persuade them that the police were trying to violate the laws of sanctuary, then you might have been getting somewhere. But you, Jonathan, you were getting nowhere. And by the way, I'm serious about us four. If we can't work together, I am out. Look at me. You know elephants? When one goes off to lie down to die, the others try and hump it back to life. Well, I'm lying down. So start humping or walk away. Right. We'll meet at five o'clock tomorrow at what might be our new office. And I don't care if the Pope comes to Darlington and gets shot. I want stories from all of you about the waste of life we saw on that road today. Harry? Where's Alice? Harry, listen. I, I... You're the guy that's been running around with my girlfriend. Never where you needed, are you? Sorry it's so early, Harry, but I thought you might like in on this one. So this bloke's the husband of the wife and the two kids, and he knows nothing about the accident. No, the trouble is we don't know how to get hold of him. They've only recently moved into the house. All the neighbours have been able to give us so far. His nice family, lovely children. Yeah. We're going to have to break in if he's not home this time. This is all highly unofficial, Harry. Don't you worry. I'll keep me distance. It's a thank you for the Vietnamese tidbit. Oh, yeah, about that. Anything? Not yet. What's the husband's name? Robert Deakin. You're not to put that out there till we found him. Of course not. Bloody shame, isn't it? Must be something somewhere. Shit. Who am I talking to? Uh, me, Robert. No, me, Sharon. Uh, let me give you some advice. Never put a phone in the bathroom. <laughs> Robert Deakin. Yes? It's the police here, sir. Can you hang on a moment? Nick! I dialed the recall button. Robert Deakin. Mr Deakin. Yes? I'm DCI Nichols.
Wait a minute, Nick. I've got to go to the bathroom. Not good, doing that on the phone. No. We're gonna wait for him here. Did he say where he was? Friend's house. His wife and kids went to see her mother and... I won't hang about. Keep in touch. They both died of head injuries after being thrown out of the car. Weren't they strapped into the child seats? What have you got, Harry? Nothing. I just wondered how they came to be outside the car. Oh, I'd say probably stretched out asleep in the back. Well, the mother wasn't wearing a seatbelt either. What's that say to you? <laughs> how often do you have to tell people? Yeah. OK, sir, thanks. Listen, did you do the man who got burnt? Mr Corrie? Yeah. I mean, we were looking after his wife last night. She's pretty upset about his wedding ring not being on his finger. If she'd seen him, she'd have been worried about his finger not being on his hand. You'd be surprised what gets lost in these pile-ups. So they haven't found it? Well, they haven't brought it to me. Probably on the side of the road, been eaten by crows. Things just get torn off in these high-speed impacts. Sold that. I was at the crash last night. So? You did a good job. Getting that car away from the others. Only I want the wedding ring back, please. Sorry, Chief? You can keep the finger. I want the ring. Are we accusing us of something? Yeah. Robbery by dismemberment. You what? His wife was holding his hand after the crash. He had all his fingers at that point. Then the fire started and you two heroes took over. You want him to let that dog off the chin? Before he does, here's 200 pounds. Says I don't have to go to the police because I'm entirely wrong. Well, we never say no to handouts, do we? Tell you what we say to newspaper men, no? Power of the press, mate. You want some? <laughs> Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Esta es la primera vez que vive. What? Chelton Company. In a statement issued this morning, the Archbishop of Canterbury deplored attempts by police in Darlington to arrest a Vietnamese refugee, Yen Ba Man, at... Oh, Mr. Salt, yeah? Please, please. Now, I think this is really going to impress you, because uh, this is the business, isn't it? I, I think it's perfection. What do you think so? Mr. Finity, when I order scrambled eggs for my breakfast and they bring me scrambled eggs, I don't congratulate them because that's what I asked for. Now, if you'll excuse us, we have a meeting. So, are we in business or what? Right. Well, Jonathan's been milking the accident investigator. I've pulled in a favour and Alice has saved your life. Oh, so far. That'll be Nick. He wants to kill you for that Vietnamese tip-off. You've got the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Chief Constable slagging each other off. Yeah, well, never mind. Anyway, I only come up with the idea. Jonathan implemented it. Not me. So, come on, accident investigators. All the papers went for the motorway madness angle, driver error. But I've discovered that the road surfaces on 99% of British motorways are substandard. They're fine when they're dry, 
but when they're wet, the coefficient of the friction factor drops. What? The what? Oh, we were doing so well. Is that going to be your headline? The coefficient of... Ignore me, ignore me. Go on, go on, go on. It's to do with grip. On a normal road, without rain, the grip factor's 0.7. And when it's wet, it goes down to 0.6. But on a motorway, it drops from 0.7 to 0.3. It's to do with the bitumen and the stones. Basically, it's cheaper. Good. Now, that's OK. But anything specific about last night? The car that caused the accident, the VW, it didn't have a puncture. They're working on the basis that the woman driver fell asleep at the wheel. That's it. Thank you very much. She didn't fall asleep. I want you all to read this. When she left home last night, she intended to do what she did. That's a note she left for her husband. She discovered he'd been unfaithful. If I can't have you, you can't have us. Oh, God, that's terrible. I mean, take your own life, but not the kids. Not to mention the other poor bastards minding their own business. Snappy, pass this on to your Mrs. Corrie. They found it in the car. So, we've got a story to sell. It's not very nice for the husband, is it, to know he's caused all this? Consequences of cheating, old son. Sometimes a black eye is nothing. I'm serious. I know. But you believe in telling the truth, don't you, Jonathan? Yeah. Well, that is the truth. Not all of it. What about the road surfaces? The big cars that protect their own passengers but kill everyone else they hit? All right, OK, we'll put it all together. We'll do an anatomy of this whole pile-up. Everything, yeah? OK. Yeah. Right. So, what do you think of the new carpet? Oh, come on, love. You're the Spanish embassy. Who else can I ask? I can't. My tape's broken. Please. No, I'm not going to say por favor. Ta. Yeah? Mm. 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 Te amo más que a mi propia vida. What? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Spanish, bit sloppy. I've told you for a couple of days. Te amo más que a mi propia vida. Just for you. And I'll put some of it for you. I didn't guess what. <laughs> Nick! You, Harold Salter, are excommunicated, defrocked, drummed out, no friend to anyone. Nick. Te amo más que a mi propia vida. Sorry about the Vietnamese man, mate. Sorry. You set me up. Nick. Hit me if it'll make you feel better. Fine crop of carrot, confidential, next on BBC One.